Good morning. Here's a starter. You can see this is a nine mark log exam question. So have a quick look at that. Okay, so you pause the video and you're having a good go at this log question. Not very nice at all. So let's see what the solutions are. Okay, so answer to part A, 17.1. The answer to part two, 32, X is 32, Y is eight. So you need both values. Now remember, that's a nine mark question. So you're expected to have spent, you know, well over 10 minutes on it, 12. Again, if you don't like this question, get help. Speak to your allocated teacher get more explanation. You know, we're not learning logs today. This is revision for your assessment. So do get help on it. Okay, so today's lesson. So we're finishing sequences and series today. And what we're going to look at is using sequences and series to solve problems. And also just some generally hard sequence and series questions of which I think we've found in recent years that students have found quite hard to decode what the questions are saying. And also sometimes they're a little bit sneaky. So basically, one of your big problems is you have to identify whether or not it's a geometric or an arithmetic sequence. It might not be either, in which case you're probably going to have to work out the terms yourself and, and do some calculations. You've got to identify what, what it's actually asking for, what term. And we find that they use the word total quite a lot. And you've got to really think about what it is that you're asking. They're asking you also, they do another thing that students find quite hard, is where they talk about the long-term behaviour. So basically, when N gets really, really large, when you have a massive value of N, and there's various ways you could do that. You could just put it into your calculator, try some large values of N. And again, translate the information given in the question into equations. So really, I mean, this started off as a short lesson, but um, I've, I have I keep thinking, oh, that's a good question, that's a good question. So I have got two types of exam questions here, example three and example four, which last year's students, I know, found quite difficult when they met them in an exam situation. So I wanted to look at those. Okay, so starting off, savings account, example one, a savings account pays 2.4% annual compound interest added at the end of each year. So you've got a percentage increase, a percentage multiplier. So already I'm thinking this is a geometric sequence. So let's read on. If £200 is paid into the account at the start of the first year, how much will there be? in the account at the start of the seventh year. So, again, it's very sort of scarily worded about almost interpreting what the start of the seventh year means. So basically, we know that a 2.4% increase is a multiplier of 1.024. So that is going to be your common ratio. You need to now work out what your first term is. So your first term at the beginning, you're starting off with 200. So what's going to happen is you can see that just as you would have done at GCSE, you have multiplying by your percentage increase multiplier. So you have got a geometric sequence. Okay, and you want to know how much is in that account at the end of the, uh, sorry, at the start of the seventh year. So you are just looking for the seventh term. And that's because this is adding the interest on the money that you will withdraw if you were to withdraw it at the beginning of the seventh year. It's just the seventh term. So if you use your formula to find the seventh term, there you've got your 230 pounds of 58 pence. 
Right, example two. An athlete is training for the London Marathon. He runs seven miles on day one and then increases his run by 0.8 miles. So the same distance every day. So instantly, you know this is an arithmetic sequence where A is seven and your common difference D is 0.8. So he wants to be able to run to complete marathon of 26.2 miles. So the first one, so you summarize your information and the first thing you're gonna do is, is basically you wanna find N, don't you? So you find the nth term of your arithmetic sequence. Now remember, you will have had to have learned this formula. So A plus N minus one D. So using your A plus N minus one D, you've got, and you put that equal to 26.2, and then you've just got an equation to solve. So reasonably straightforward, you would divide both sides by 0 0.8, so you can see that N is going to be 25, so 25 days. How many miles does he run over the whole training period? So this is where you're gonna add things up. So this is the sum question. So you're now going to find the sum of the miles covered in the first 25 days. So this formula you are given, so remember the sum of n terms of an arithmetic sequence is n over two, bracket 2a plus n minus 1d. So all you're going to do is you're going to put those into your formula and your answer is 415 miles. So you just have to know when you're finding like an nth term or a sum to n terms. Right, I'm afraid it's now going to change in level of difficulty. So this is a question, I quite like to get rid of that dotted line. So this is a question from one of our sample test papers. And uh, it, we've, there have been very similar questions in exams that students have maybe found the wording confusing of. So you've got two businesses, business A, business B. Business A made 5,000 profit during its first year and every year it increases its profit by the same amount. So you can see that business A is an arithmetic sequence. So let's go to part A first of all. Find an expression for the total profit, so total profit made by business A during the first N years. Not the profit that it made in that nth year, it wants the total profit made by the business in N years. So it wants you to add them together. So it's a sum. So the first thing you're going to do is you're gonna find the sum to N terms. Now remember you are given this formula you know the sum to n terms is n over 2, bracket 2a plus n minus 1d. So you substitute your, for your values in and you would be expected for full marks to simplify that to one or other of these. So either your n bracket, 750n plus 4250, or with that bracket expanded. So either of those are going to be acceptable. So there's part A. Let's now look at part B. Find, right, it did say give it in the simplest form. B, find an expression for the total profit of business B. So let's look at business B. Business B made a profit of 5,000 in its first year and each subsequent year, the profit was 90%. So of the previous profit. So you can see that this is a geometric sequence with first term 5,000. And each year, your profit is 90% of it. So your common ratio is 0 0.9. So you want again for B, find an expression for the total profit of this, of this business of the first N years. Now again, that is the sum 
to n terms. Now, if you remember your little formula, again, you will be told this. The sum to n terms of a geometric sequence is a bracket 1 minus r to the power of n all over 1 minus r. So if you substitute your values into your formula, so you're going to get credit, you'll get a mark for doing that, and then you'll get a mark for simplifying. Now, this is a good skill to have, the simplifying of your sum to n terms of a geometric sequence. What I would do is I would work this denominator out and then divide your a by it. So you're having the 5,000 divided by the 50,000. So, sorry, you're having the 5,000 divided by the 0.1, which gives you your 50,000. So here's your simplified expression. Either of those are absolutely fine. I think I might find this one more useful later on, but it's totally up to you. Right, next one. C, how many years will it take for the total profit of business A to reach 385,000? So 385,000. So all you're going to do is you're going to take this expression and put it equal to that. Okay, so this is three marks. So it's reasonably generous, I would say, at this stage. So if you put that equal to 385,000, there's your quadratic. You know, you ha it hasn't said show detailed reasoning. That could be put in your calculator. And you will get two values. N is 20 or N is a negative value. Obviously, you can't have your negative value. It's your 20 years. So that's your three marks of work. And then the last bit is quite an interesting question for two marks. Comment on the profits made by each business in the long term. So in the long term, let's have a little look. Take your sum to n terms of business A. So of business A, so have a quick look. If you put in a really large value of n into that sum to n terms, you're just going to get a really, you know, you're going to get a big value, aren't you? You're just going to get a big value. So as n gets large, business A's profits will continue to grow. So they will grow steadily. Uh, and you've got, if you look back at the question, you know, they are growing by £1,500 every year. So they'll just continue to grow. Let's now look at B. So if you look at your sum to n terms of B. Now, here's my sum to n terms, the one that I'm using. Just check I've got the right number of zeros. Yes, I have. So if n becomes large, you know 0.9 to a very large value will tend to zero because anything between one and negative one raised to a really large power tends to zero. So what's going to happen is over a really long period of time, this is going to tend to 50,000 take away nothing. So business B's profits will eventually plateau at 50,000 because this will tend to zero. Right, last question. And this is a bit of a corker as well. So I'll just do that so you can see the whole thing. Right, a sequence is defined by this term here. So by un equals 10 times 0 0.5 to the n. Now, this is such a nasty way for them to have defined the sequence. And I have basically, um, this is an exam question that I have doctored so that you can see what it's like. The reason this is such a nasty question is because by looking at that, everyone thinks, not everyone, but lots of people will think that that's a geometric sequence the first term a and common ratio 0.5 so which it isn't sorry first term 10 and common ratio 0.5 it is not 
So let's have a little look. Part A, find the sum of the first seven terms, right? Don't fall into their trap of thinking A is 10 and R is 0 0.5. Think about it. That's not how you define the first and nth term of a geometric sequence. In a geometric sequence, your nth term is defined with a power of n minus 1. So, awful, awful question. So first, what I've done here is I've actually worked out what the first term is. U1 will be 10 times 0 0.5 to the power of 1. And 10 times 0 0.5 is 5. So your first term is 5 and your common ratio is 0 0.5. So the correct definition of a geometric sequence general term is this. Right, that's not what it's asked you though. It's asked you for the sum of seven terms. So the sum to the first seven terms, remember your sum to n terms is a bracket one minus r to the power n all over one minus r. So that's 9.92 to three significant figures. Part B, now you've got those sum to infinity. So reasonably straightforward, you know your sum to infinity of a geometric sequence is a over 1 minus r. So a over 1 minus r, so 5 divided by a half is 10. So your sum to an infinite number of terms is 10. And now your more interesting and challenging question. Use an algebraic method to find the smallest value of n such that the sum to infinity of this sequence, take away the sum to n terms, is less than 10 to the power of minus 6. So that's just saving them writing out a really ugly long decimal. So let's have a think. We've worked this out and we know that we can just do this by substituting into the formula. So let's have a little look at how we would embark C. The reason they're saying algebraic method and show detailed reasoning is they don't want you to put it into your table function. So you've now got your sum to infinity, take away your sum to n terms. So your sum to n terms obviously being a bracket one minus r to the power n all over one minus r. And that is less than 10 to the minus six. So next step, the first thing I've done Again, here is I've worked this out. So the, the one take away a half and I've said five divided by a half to give me 10. I'm now going to expand this bracket. And the reason I've done that is because I'm really keen to not have this as a negative term. So 10, take away 10 and then leaving me this term here. Remember... Again, another common mistake. 10 times 0 0.5 to the n is it's just that. It is not 5 to the power n. You cannot get in to this because the law of indices won't let you. So that 10 stays on the outside. Divide both sides by 10, all good with an inequality because you're dividing by a positive value. And now you're going to solve your, uh, you're going to take logs of both sides. Now remember, logs inequalities, you give them some respect. I'm going to take them to the logs, log to the base 10 using LOG. Laws of logs, my n will come down. Okay, and now to get n on its own, I'm going to divide by the log of 0 0.5, but I'm going to think. It's an inequality. Am I dividing by a negative amount? Find the log of 0 0.5 on your calculator. It is indeed negative. So when you divide by it, and that should have had a nice divide line there. I'll just put one in. That's not looking good, is it? I would be better with a nice divide. Now, why is that not letting me do that? I think I've got it on white. So give me a minute and I'm going to put a nice divide line in there. As you can see, it's a little bit thick. Whoa. There we go. That's better. Can I move that up? 
Right, so I'm dividing. No, I can't. Right, that's better. Right, so had a little bit of a mare there, but we're back on. So you divide both sides by the log of 0 0.5 and it inverts the inequality because you are changing, you are, you are dividing by a negative value. Putting this in your calculator, you're going to get 23.3. And if, so n has to be greater than 23.3. So the smallest n is 24. So that's a really good question. And here are your questions to do. And here are your answers. Now, when you look at the questions, there aren't anything like the ones that I just did at the end. But don't worry, I will find some questions up like that for your homework tomorrow. See you tomorrow.